In this lecture, I'll show you how to create your first Blink application uh, so, that, so that you'll be able to control the built-in LED and the external LED on your Arduino Nano 33 IoT. Let's continue where we left off in the previous lecture. So in the previous lecture, you created a Blink account after installing the Blink app on your phone and you logged in for the first time. And you are graded probably in your case with just a blank screen that would look like this that allows you to create a new project. In my case, because I was playing around with the application, I've got a couple of other apps already running and uh, I can just browse through them and pick the application that I'd like to play with now. Uh, this is the application that I demonstrated at the beginning of this section. So what I'll do is I am going to delete it. So go into the settings and just delete this application and start from scratch. Another thing that I wanted to show you here before we get into the app development step is to tap onto the I button, the information button, and notice that the server to which we are connected is the Blink Cloud server. Later on in another uh, section in this course, I'll show you how to use a private server instead, which has significant advantages. All right, let's go back here and I'm going to create a new project and let's call it um, Demo 1 for lack of a more imaginative name and select the device. As you can see, we've got access to a wide range of possible devices. Uh, there is no device specifically mentioning the name of the uh, Arduino Nano 33 IoT. Um, let's see if we can get anything anywhere close to it. I guess the Arduino MKR1000 would be the closest to it. So I'm going to select that knowing that it does not match the name of my board. It's important to select a device that is as close as possible to your actual target device because that is how Blink knows which pins especially to provide to you in its user interface. So I'm going to come back to that in a moment. Uh, for connection type, uh, this is pretty obvious. We're going to go with Wi-Fi. All right, now create project. Okay, and notice that there is an application token that was sent to my email address for this account. And this is important because this is the, the token. Uh, think of it as a password that allows my Arduino app, so the sketch that is running on the Arduino, to talk to my application on my phone via the Blink cloud server. So we're going to check my email in a moment. So if you don't find that email you want it to be sent again, or for whatever reason, uh, you made a mistake somewhere and you want to recreate that token, just go back into the settings and you'll see that the authentication token that uh, was just generated is this. You can change it or you can just send the email with this large uh, alphanumeric uh, token to your email address. You can do that from here. Now, before we have a look at the token, just want to show you one thing. So tap anywhere, and let's say pick the button, and then tap on the button itself to configure it. You'll see that we've got an, a choice of pin that we'd like to control. Now, what you see here, especially for the digital and analog pins, which are listed right here, depend on the type of device that you have selected. So as, as you remember, we selected the MKR1000 as the uh, device that we are targeting here. And Blink has configured this device to have six analog pins. And let's go for digital. Oops, I need to scroll. It's a wheel there. And um, 14 digital pins. And having a look at the documentation here, as you can see, the Arduino Nano 33 IoT has got a total of um, 21 digital pins. So there's a bunch of them on the right side and the, the rest on the other side. And many of them double as analog pins as well. 
So you can see A0 to A7. So when it comes to analog pins on the application itself, we have all of them available through the Blink app. Uh, all seven of them are available. If we are interested in digital pins, we've got a total of 14, 14 digital pins available, even though the Arduino Nano itself has got 21. So um, just keep an eye on the Blink store in case the Blink developers uh, target specifically the Arduino Nano 33 IoT. Um, that does not mean that you cannot address all of the pins on your Arduino just because you know the, the digital options here go up to digital pin 14. You also have a large number of virtual pins, and I'm going to talk about those and show you how to use them later on. You can see you've got hundreds and hundreds of digital of, of virtual pins, and you can uh, map virtual pins to anything else you want on your Arduino, whether they are physical pins or even functions, and therefore you can tap onto any kind of functionality that you want through the abandoned virtual pins rather than digital or, or analog pins. Uh, the big advantage of digital or analog pins is that you don't need to do any coding, any any work in your sketch, you can just use the Blink driver, which essentially is a firmware that connects the uh, Blink application with your uh, tag device. And without any programming, you'll be able to target digital pins. I'm actually going to show you how to do that now. All right, so that's um, a bit of a parenthesis here in relation to the pins and the type of device that you use uh, as and you set it in your um, Blink application. Just remind you that we've got the NKR 1000 set up here with Wi-Fi, even though we're using an Arduino Nano 33 IoT. All right, I'm going to delete this button for now so that uh, we can do the development in one go very soon in a few minutes. Now, let's go over to the Arduino sketch. So I'll go over to my computer. I've got a blank sketch here. Uh, the easiest way to begin is to use templates and then modify templates as needed. Now there are two sources of templates uh, that are managed by Blink themselves. The first one is called the examples.blink.cc. Uh, and or the Blink example browser that you can see here. So you load this in your browser and then that gives you access to combination of boards and then the connection type that they're using. So for example, if you're using an Arduino Uno with your Blink application and you can plug in an Ethernet shield on it, then with these two choices, the example browser will give you a template that you can use and build on. You can do the same thing with the ESP32, for example, and say the built-in LED, so the built-in Wi-Fi should be available somewhere here. Just wait for this to update. There you go. So we've got the ESP32 built-in Wi-Fi. If you go for an Arduino, say zero, this is not the 033, it's just an Arduino zero, and it's got these options. So this is one place where you can go looking for templates. My preferred way to find templates for Blink is to look at the Blink examples, the examples that come with the Blink library in the Arduino IDE. So go under File, and examples, and then down here, this Blink, and go for Boards Wi-Fi. Now here, you'll find a bunch of examples, including the ESP32 and the Arduino MKR1010. So you can see this example does not exist in the Blink example browser web page. So choose this option, and then you'll see that the example imports Wi-Fi-Nina, or Wi-Fi Nina, which is the chip that the Arduino Nano 33 IoT is using, and the Blink simple Wi-Fi Nina dot H, the, the header file that allow us to use uh, this communication option with Blink. 
So all you need to provide here are the authentication token that was emailed to you a bit earlier when you created the app on the Blink application, and then the credentials for your network. Uh, below that, you'll see that you've got the setup function, which has a very important function, the begin uh, that belongs to the Blink object. You pass the authentication token and then the credentials for your network, and that connects your Arduino to the public Blink server and uh, its operations begin. If you're using a private server, as we'll be doing in another section in this course, then you'll be able to call this version of the begin function. And instead of connecting to the public server, you'll be connecting to a private or local server, perhaps an arbitrary IP address and port number. Inside the loop is the, minimi, the minimal version of a, a Blink sketch. All you've got to do is to call the run function of the Blink object at least once per loop, and that will uh, manage all of the various Blink operations. Okay, let's go on and build on this sketch. And I'm only going to make a, a single modification. I'm going to create a new tab. I'm just going to save this sketch so that I can modify it. So let's call it the default name. And I'm going to create a new tab and call it secret or secrets.h. And this is where I'll be putting all the various credentials. And then in the main sketch, I will use include secrets.h to import the credentials. Next, I'm going to cut the credentials from the main sketch and put them into the secret.h file and save. All right, now about the credentials. This is the authentication token uh, that I mentioned earlier, the one that we emailed from the application to your email address. So copy this and paste it inside your secrets.h file inside the authentication uh, character array like this. And then go ahead and set your credentials for your network. And with that done, I can go ahead and just uh, upload this sketch to my Arduino. And as you notice, I haven't done any other modifications. This essentially is the bare minimal and just the, the template of the example sketch. Okay, Wifina is missing. I need to ensure that I do have this uh, library. So go into sketch, include library, manage library, and install this library. Okay, and try again. Hopefully nothing else is missing. Let's fix the board. All right. Uh, <laughs> and sure that I've got the correct board selected and the correct port. All right, they look good. Now let's upload the sketch. All right, so we've got the sketch uploaded and I remind you that we are running the bare minimum sketch without any provision for any kind of pin control. So let's go and do a little experiment. I've just um, created a new button. I'm going to tap on the button, select the digital pin 13, the built-in digital pin, and see what it does. So they got 13. So I've got digital pin 13 here. I'm going to use it as a regular push button instead of a switch button and hit OK. Now I'm going to press on the play button on the top of the app window and press on the button momentarily on the screen. You can see that the built-in LED on pin 13 turns on and off. Perfect. Let's also control the 
uh, external LED now. So I've just stopped the application. I'm going to tap anywhere on the screen. I'm going to use this time a styled button. Looks like that. Tap on it to configure it. Now this LED is connected to digital pin 2. So I'm going to select digital and 2 and turn that into a switch. All right, now play the app again. Tap on the big button. You can see that the LED turns on and it stays on. And same thing when I turn it off. Great. Okay, so as you can see, out of the box, the Blink library allows me to control pins and turn them on and off. But if we want to do anything more interesting, like work with sensors, for example, or even write PWM values to the pins, we will actually need to write a little bit of code. So I'm going to show you how to do something very simple, such as to control via PWM this LED, and that will give us the opportunity to work with virtual pins as well. So we'll do that in the next lecture.